G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. I uh, have a bit of a confession. I came up with a heist. It's real simple. All you have to do is run an internationally recognized conference for astronomy and become sponsored by a whole bunch of companies and have those sponsors send you prizes for the crowd. Now QHY sent a bunch of cameras for the crowd and we gave away most of them. We gave away all but one because there was one camera that they sent me that I kind of wanted for myself. I'm so sorry QHY, I'm still in DSO mode, I'm still taking deep space photos at the moment and this is a planetary camera so it's not really geared up for that. However, it does look like it's about to stop raining so I've checked the stats, it looks like the sampling for this camera will be perfect for my little Lunt 400mm focal length telescope. Should frame the sun really nice so I'm going to test with that first and then when I switch over for planetary season this, I think, will be my camera of choice for 2024. Let's give it a run. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. The clouds have gone away and the sun's just coming out now and uh, I was right this camera is performing beautifully it's framed the sun nicely everything is sharp and crisp the resolution is perfect for this telescope the sampling is spot on this Apertura power supply is worth its weight in gold uh, High Point Scientific sent me this and for the first time I'm not doing any inversion I'm not doing any AC at all I'm actually just running the laptop off the USB-C power and a separate cable for the Skywatcher GTI here and of course the dark room. Future Dylan here. Uh, as fun as that was streaming on YouTube and getting drunk <laughs> on, on stream uh, not very conducive to actually doing any um, productive astrophotography. Uh, it was later when I looked at the images that I realized a little bit of a tilt issue. I'll show you what I mean. So this is not really the camera's fault, um, but there is, you know, a bit of give here, especially because in order for me to get focus with the light, I'm really at the edge here. Now inside, you can see the rings in there. These screws will tighten those rings so that they hold it. With this sort of at the edge here, it's really just hanging on by a thread. And the cable, and the cable will actually drag and wobble this around. So what I need to do as I'm getting this in focus, and before I do any images, is make sure these are both really tight, but also make sure that this is coming straight down. And not only that way, but this way side to side as well. Once it's in there and clamped on pretty good, it's mostly fine. So I think this will be fine as long as I just check that it's straight before I start shooting anything. Now everything looked beautiful. The sun was crisp and sharp, edge to edge. Focus was nailed across the face of the sun and my daytime polar alignment was like the best I've ever done. And I think the reason for this is Again, I'm using my eyeball method. I'm using my smartphone to try and align the mount so that it's pointing straight at the South Celestial Pole or in your case, maybe the North Celestial Pole. And I do this by enabling the axis line, the celestial equator in the sky guide for iOS software. So I can see the line and I can sort of eyeball it from left to right around the mount. It actually worked really well. But a lot of you wanted to know how I get from this video, this raw data, to this, the final color image of the sun. Obviously this is false color because it's a monochrome camera and you're probably wondering how I got so much detail out of the final image. So let me show you some processing. 
This is my Astro Imaging computer. This is the one that does all of the um, processing afterwards. Well, in my case, I'm using Photoshop. You don't have to use Photoshop. General principles apply to other software as well. But uh, I will be using IMPGG. Think that, is that right? IMPPG? Really good software for the deconvolution and the stretch. But the other software that you definitely need is AutoStack It. AutoStack It's really good stacking software to process these videos and to turn them into final stacks. But before we go there, I'll just mention that this video is sponsored by High Point Scientific. If you want one of these solar rigs, this little solar rig, or maybe even a bigger one, High Point Scientific's got you covered and they ship anywhere, even to Australia. They have a price match guarantee and they fully support their equipment and they've been supporting this channel for a long time. So thank you, High Point Scientific. All right, let's do some processing. Now, the real difference between the QHY200M and the QHY678M that I'm using here is that the, the pixels are half the size on the 678M. And what that allowed me to do is to crop in quite tightly, even though the LUNT 40 millimeter has a full disc view, I was able to use the region of interest in sharp cap to reduce that capture area to just the bit I wanted, which also let me speed up. You don't want to do more than 30 seconds on the sun because everything's moving and it will blur out. And because this camera is so fast, you really, really need a fast hard drive. I didn't have a very fast hard drive. So what I did was reduce it down to the eight bit mode so I could get the most frames possible and get them written out to the disc really quickly. So I ended up getting about 2000 frames in 30 seconds, which worked really well. And I also took two versions, one overexposed and one regular exposed on the surface. And that allows me to composite them later and get that out of detail. You don't have to do this. You can stretch it a little bit harder in IMPPG, but I do like this method. Okay, here I am. I have AutoStack It open. AutoStack It is like floating windows, so don't worry about that. I've got a file manager open, and I've got IMPPG open in the background there, and Photoshop in the background there. Uh, but let's go back to AutoStack It and File Manager. And you see here, if I drag one of these images onto the open button in AutoStack It, it opens there and this one should be the overexposed one. So I'm actually going to drag both of them by control clicking and pull them both onto the open. So it's going to process two at once. First thing I'm going to do is change this from planet to surface uh, because they have very different stabilization properties. If we go surface, it's going to use the full image and not try and planet is for detecting a full disk of something. Uh, next thing we have this green box here in which we can control click around to create an anchor point. I'm going to create an anchor point um, on the edge here because I know that the other overexposed image is mostly edge detail. So I'm going to create an anchor point right here. And then I'm going to make sure that in my stacking settings here, drizzle is on by 1.5. I'm going to tick sharpened. Um, you can play with the parameters for this. We're not going to use the sharpened version no, because we're going to do our sharpening in IMPPG. But um, it's good to see what the, the sharpened version, the auto stack at deconvolution can be quite good too. So it's good to, to check that as well. For frame percentage, I'm going to set this to, let's say 20%. You can go lower and get even better quality. So just use the best frames. Um, but let's say 20% for this example. And now we're going to hit analyze in auto stack it here. This will go through and analyze the positioning of each frame, stabilize everything. Then we'll be ready to set the alignment points. Okay, that's done. We can set the alignment points. So you've got some options here for the size of the alignment points and minimum brightness. And so you adjust those and hit place AP on grid. That's about good. I like that um, it's not too many of those alignment points, but not too few as well. Now I'm just gonna hit the stack button. Okay, after that stack is done, you should see a new folder with uh, AS underscore P and then the, the percentage you were stacking. So this is the 20% stack. Uh, I usually like to check the convoluted ones, which is the sharpened ones. Now this is auto stack at sharpening. 
it's a little bit harsh. You can mix in a smaller percentage uh, if you prefer, but we're not gonna use that. I just like to see that it's actually worked. Uh, so that's that one and I'll check the outer layer. Yep, that looks fine. Uh, we're not gonna use these sharpened versions. We're gonna use these versions here. So yeah, we've got two normal. They're stacked, but they're not sharpened yet. So this is what we're gonna use IMPPG for. So I'll go into IMPPG, which is this interface here. Now this only works with monochrome images, which is fine because that's what we're doing with solar. Uh, and I'm going to open up that new image that I just did, the unsharpened version, open that up. And it gives you this little square, which is like it's processing square. So you can do comparisons on areas with and without the, um, the processing. Uh, what I tend to do is just process the whole lot. So I'll use this icon here to select the whole image, zoom out a bit, and you, we can turn up the Lucy Richardson deconvolution here, or the iterations, and play with that until we're happy with it. Okay, so after a bit of fiddling, I've set it to 2.2 Sigma with an iteration of 65, and I think that looks pretty good. Everything looks sharp, but not too sharp, which is good. And here we get into the tone curve stuff. So I like to just invert this just to see the how it looks inverted. I think that looks amazing. I love the inverted view so much. Uh, and then we get to play with this tone curve. So what I'll do is I'll just pull this out to get some brightness. And honestly, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I'd kind of like leave it like that. Um, but you can go crazy with this tone curve. You can put extra points all the way through it to increase the contrast or decrease the contrast in certain areas. Um, I'm gonna leave it fairly smooth here. I'll put another point here and you can see that you can reveal the outer edge material, the flares and prominences off the edge. So that can be good too, but you gotta be careful you don't wipe out those that edge detail anyway. And we're gonna composite the outside stuff my goal here is not to necessarily bring out that stuff in IMPPG. So I'll reset the tone curve again. Let's do that again, invert, and just pull this up. And I think that's pretty good. I'm just gonna leave that there. So I'll bounce this out. I'll go save, put it in the 20 folder. And I'll just say, I'll call that inside. It saves it as a TIFF. Now I'll open up the other one and apply the same Sharpening, it keeps all of our settings. So all the sharpening is there. Reset this tone, invert. We can obviously invert this later in Photoshop as well. Good amount of detail there. So I'll bounce that off and I'll call that outside. Open the outside and the inside in Photoshop here. They're not one for one alignments. So I'm gonna have to move this around a bit. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna select all with control A, copy, and paste this in. I'm gonna change the blend mode so I can see what I'm doing. Let's just change it to 50% so I can drag this outside layer around and match it up with the flares. I think that's about right. Now at this point, I would play with the blending to see what blending works best. I've inverted that outside layer there. And the good thing about this is we can now apply colors separately to each of the layers because I like the sky to be blue and I like the sun to be orange, even though they're false colors. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is crop this in. I'm gonna rotate this around and I'm gonna add an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna hit the bottom layer, the background, layer, new adjustment layer. Oh, we're gonna convert it to uh, RGB first, RGB, image mode RGB, don't flatten, layer, new adjustment layer, hue and saturation, and I'll tick colorize and just drag that over to the orange slider a bit, give it a bit of saturation there, that looks nice. And honestly, the sky black behind it looks pretty cool too. But for this layer, I'm not gonna apply an adjustment layer, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna actually apply the same process, adjustments, hue and saturation directly to that layer. Uh, also colorize, but we're gonna go for the blue there. And I'm, I'm not gonna add too much saturation to that though, so 
and really from this point onwards it's just fiddling with the image so this is ready you can now bounce it out as a jpeg or whatever you like that's about it hopefully you enjoyed that processing this is one of the easier forms of astrophotography it's very quick and very satisfying pretty quick video just over a couple of sessions and it's something you can do very quickly every day and see what's going on in the sun which is always super interesting especially now that we're in a solar maximum and the sun is just interesting all the time uh, as i was taking these images there were there was lots of flare activity and in fact because this is inverted you can see the dark spot there is actually some minor flaring going on from that sunspot uh yeah interesting stuff anyway my name is dylan at all and you've been watching star stuff and remember everything is meaningless and we're all going to die